is Dr. Heidi Fell, and in this video I'm going to show you how to identify your patients that are overdue for pap smears. So in this case, because the, of the data type needed, I'm going to work with my own patient population. So for this reason, when I'm running searches, I'll be running them using the pie graph in order to not show you any confidentiality. Uh, sorry, any confidential information. Remember when you're running it though that you most likely want to use this button here which gives you a list of patient names, okay? This is strictly for limitations of test data and confidentiality reasons. So in this case, I'm a physician, I'm running it as myself, so I don't need to add any search all patients or a primary MD section to the search, but if you're running it as a staff member, remember that you need those two pieces. Okay, I want to know, so first of all, let's look at what my panel size is to start with. So 545 patients in my panel to start with. Okay, and I want to know my patients between the ages of 25 and 69. And remember in Wolf that if you choose between, it will include people that are 25 years one day and people that are going to turn 70 tomorrow. Okay. And I also only want females. So let's check that to make sure that makes some sense. So 234 total patients. And knowing my patient panel, that's about the right number for females within that age group. So next, I want to look for patients that have not had a pap smear in the last three years. So in most places in the province, the best way to look at this is in your lab results, which is under history. So I want to use this lab results most recent part. And I don't care what the value is. I just want to know if they've had a test done. So I happen to know that for our lab, with the way my database is set up, I'm looking for cytopathology report. That's how pap smears come in. Now, if you're in a different section of the province than I am, you may have them come in under a different name, and you might need the help of either your office administrator or your improvement facilitator or top staff in order to help identify what you need to call this. But for me, it's cytopathology report. And I want to say observed in the last three years. Okay. So first of all, let's do the patients that have had a pap smear in the last three years. So that's 190 of the 200 and some that we had identified. So now if we say not, the patients that have not had a pap smear, the number should be much smaller. So 44. So I'm getting, you know, a good chunk of my pap smears done. But when you, know, when you run the list, you will notice that there's some patients on there that have had hysterectomies that aren't eligible for pap smears anymore. So how do I refine my search to make this number smaller? Because I don't think there's actually 44 that are late. I know that there's probably about 20 because I've been following this number. So there's a few in there that don't belong in the list. So what am I going to do next? Well, I'm going to try and exclude people that have had hysterectomies. So I'm going to use the surgery parameter here. You'll see it comes up. And I can type in hysterectomy. Hit enter and then choose from the bottom. All right, so now we're running into a common problem where we have many, many, many different kinds of hysterectomy in our surgery list. Most offices will run into this problem. Ours is especially bad because we have several databases converged together. But I do know that I'm fairly consistent with my terminology, what I call it. So it's probably a hysterectomy in BSO um, or a couple of others. And I can add more by clicking on the plus choosing from the drop-down, choosing another parameter. I probably don't want to add cervical dysplasia because they may still need uh, ongoing pap smears. 
but I can add several other types of vasectomy. And you can keep going, but I'm not going to add them all here just for the interest of your time. And we want to exclude patients that have ever had one of these surgeries. Okay. And let's look and see now. Oh, we're down to 38. So we've gotten rid of six of them, and there's probably a few more buried in the other terms. Okay. I know that's still not quite right, but I also know that some of them are following a colposcopy clinic. So how do I eliminate those ones? So I know that my staff are very consistent with using the same word colposcopy all the time. So I can do documents. So I can add yet another parameter. So I can eliminate documents with the keyword colposcopy. So type in the top section and spell correctly usually helps. Hit enter and choose from the bottom. So again, you'll see huge numbers of keywords with colposcopy in them, which just points out how important it is to have consistent keywords, which is the subject of another video, actually. But I know that we are standard on this one now. So I want to eliminate any of my patients that have had colposcopy information come into my chart within the last 12 months. And probably, well, in this case, it didn't get rid of too many more, but it, that is one additional step. Okay. Now, what about a patient that has had a pap smear done elsewhere? And I have a copy of it in NetCare, or from NetCare that I've put into my EMR. Well, that's going to come in as a document as well. So I'm going to choose that documents parameter again here. And I'm going to add it at the bottom. And the keyword is PAPS. And that is the keyword that you should use because that sorts it into the investigation field within their medical summary. So PAPS with an S is the keyword that you do want to use for this. Okay. In the last three years, and we want to exclude those patients. So this is a patient where we got a document. And you can see that's excluded yet a few more. So when you're building a search, you want to think about your practice and all of the reasons that patients, the search results might not be coming up correctly for you. And then you can add those in uh, to, to your search. Now, building a search is not always perfect on the first time. So you can save it, and then when you run into a situation that doesn't work, you can examine it to look at either the patient's document is coded incorrectly, or you don't have a copy of their PAP and you can get one, um, or you're using the wrong lab parameter, etc., etc. And you can go back and fix your search at a later time. One other trick with these is that if you see these PAPs and mammograms fields on the left, these are only for the ones that you've entered manually through new preventive care procedure. Okay? If you haven't entered the results in manually through that, then these parameters will not work for you. If you happen to enter all your results in, then go ahead and use these, but otherwise you're generally using uh, documents and lab results for this. But we've spent our time building our search, and it's where we want it to, for now, to be for now, so we're going to go ahead and save it. We're going to say File, Save search, put in a search name, so no pap last three years, and we're going to save it. Remember, I can share it if I want to, but we're going to save it as new. Okay. Search save successfully. So there is the start of a pap smear rule for you. This one is a little bit more tricky because it varies a little bit section to section in the province for how you find your PAPs and there are often several ways that uh, patients are get excluded from this rule so you have to manage those as well but hopefully that gets you started on it. Okay thanks and we'll talk to you next time.